Good morning. Happy Thursday. It is 10 o'clock and time for another episode of the Hospitality Hotline. This week, I am answering all the questions that I received from you during the Roast Chicken Challenge. This is the sixth week, final week of the Roast Chicken Challenge, and I have gotten so many great questions. I wanted to put them all together in one place for you and answer them. Some of them are very quick. <clears throat> Some of them are a little more detailed. So we're going to just go ahead and dive right in. We've got a little bit of work cut out for us today. Number one, is there a difference if you buy the whole chicken from the deli as opposed to the one in the package? Okay. Great question. If you watched the video, uh, the first video, which is saved to my stories, where I kind of went start to finish taking chicken from the grocery store, getting it all the way oven ready, you will see in that video, I used a, what, I, what I call a bird in the bag. And it's the one where it's like got the shrink wrapped plastic around it. It's the one you're most likely gonna find in a grocery store. Part of what I show you in that video, and honestly, part of what makes roasting a chicken so daunting is getting it out of that bag with your sanity and um, germ-free existence intact can be a challenge. So there's a lot of paper toweling. Those are very juicy. Uh, they usually have some sort of bag of organs inside the cavity of the chicken. I highly recommend gloves and I walk you through that process. There is a way to do it that is as clean as possible. When you get a bird from the deli counter or the meat counter at somewhere like Central Market, and you bring it home, it's wrapped in paper, there may be a modicum of some sort of liquid, maybe. But the experience is totally different. The bird is barely needs any drying because it's essentially dry when they hand it to you. And so the user experience is completely different. However, the chicken itself, there's not much of a difference. Now, as with all food, fresher is better. So carrots that someone grew in their garden and you know, harvested this morning and then you put on your plate are going to taste more carroty and more delicious than, you know, the carrot that's been sitting in the grocery store shelf for who knows how long that you brought home and two weeks later decided to roast. I mean, food is a perishable item. So yes, there is some difference as far as the breed or kind of bird and have at it, have at it. But I'm here to tell you normal grocery store birds are just fine. It's just fine. If you wanna get hung up on the pedigree of your bird, then do it. But um, not necessarily a requirement to roast a chicken and to get good at it. Also, if you have a meat counter, get, get the butcher to give you the bird. It's just gonna remove the juicy part. But if you wanna know how to deal with the juicy part, it's on the video saved to the highlights of my story. Great question. Okay, number two. Is it wrong to roast a chicken in a Dutch oven? I don't have a roasting pan and I'm wondering if it would be worth it to invest in one. <clears throat> okay, I love this question. Uh, and let's define some terms. A Dutch oven is typically a large, I'm trying to use my hands here, kind of large 10 inch, maybe I have a really big one, cast iron or heavy metal pot that has a lid. It usually has high sides. I should have brought one to show you. I'm realizing now that would have been a helpful prop, but high sides, heavy lid. That's a Dutch oven. You can absolutely roast a chicken in a Dutch oven. Nothing wrong with that. You need to know a couple of things. <clears throat> the surface area of the chicken in a Dutch oven is the exposed surface area is much less than if that chicken were laying on something flat and it was exposed to all the hot air in the oven. Your chicken will roast in a Dutch oven. Don't use the lid but you will not be able to get those kind of shatteringly crisp potatoes. The skin of the chicken may brown a little bit on the top, but it's gonna look a little bit different than a bird that has just been exposed to all that hot air circulating around it like it would on a sheet tray or a roasting pan. Not a bad thing. Some people don't care about the crispy skin. Some people want their potatoes soft and that's fine. You can definitely roast a chicken in a Dutch oven. Just make sure um, there's a, you know, make sure your chicken fits in it. Dutch ovens come in a lot of sizes, so make sure you've got one that your chicken will fit in. You can put the vegetables, the potatoes underneath. They will definitely cook. They will not be crisp, but they will be delicious and all the same rules apply. So yes is the answer to that question. I do want to put a plug here for roasting pans though. It's a really good investment. 
you will use it if this is something you're into you will use it um, my family is a two chicken family and so a roasting pan will perfectly hold two chickens two bags of potatoes all that you want to find a roasting pan that is worth it though and I'm just gonna give you what I use my favorite brand for cookware in general is all clad and let me tell you I have never paid full price for a single piece of my all clad collection it is something that I have been collecting little pieces probably for the last 10 years all three of the roasting pans that I own I have one at home and two here at Hurley house that we use I got all of them at home goods if you check in pretty regularly at stores like Home Goods or TJ Maxx, um, they will have all clad from time to time. And when you see it, buy it. Other stores sell it, you know, and they'll have sales and full price and all that. But I've just never paid full price for all clad, but I've, I've waited till I've found what I wanted. I would say don't mess around with the other brands. I've never owned another brand, so there might be another brand that's wonderful out there. This is, this is me telling you what I use and what I love and why I I just I love all clad it's the only um, cookware that I use and I have never regretted for a single second the money involved in those pants they will last you a lifetime they're easy to clean if you have questions about cookware ask me but all clad is the way to go so maybe ask for one for Christmas and you can add it to your collection okay number three such a good question do you wash the chicken Guys, no, 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 no. We do not wash the chicken. This is one of those things. This is an old wives tale that has been passed down through the ages that you needed to wash the chicken before you cook it. I can't imagine washing a chicken. All you're doing is taking whatever germs are growing on the surface of that chicken and distributing them around your kitchen and your sink and whatever surfaces the water ricochets onto, now those are chickeny and gross. It, there's no benefit. Let's, I love to play what's the worst thing that could happen. Sometimes that helps um, quiet some fears. What's the worst thing that could happen? First of all, most of the poultry here in the United States does not is not contaminated. We have very strict guidelines on our food and from time to time something will happen and we hear about it and there's an outbreak and things get pulled from the shelf. 99.9% .9 of the time though, the food that we buy is fine. But let's say there was something gross on the surface of the chicken that you bought from the grocery store. Great. You are about to put it into a 425 degree oven in which whatever was there is no longer with us and the washing is just not serving any purpose except to spread potential hazardous material all over your kitchen if you want to argue about this later we can argue about it but i never never roast or never wash my chickens it's just unnecessary so consider yourself freed from the burden of needing to wash your chicken okay question number four this was very to the point no onions or carrots in the pan, why? Okay, if you follow along and watch my stories, you saw the other night when I, on purpose, sliced up two onions, put them in the bottom of the pan that I was roasting the chicken in, and then showed you what happened. It was a wet, soggy ocean of water down in the bottom of my chicken pan. Onions and carrots are mostly water, and when we put them into an oven, underneath a chicken which is also contributing kind of all the wonderful chicken juices it's waterlogged they release all that water there's not enough time for that water to cook out like you would if it were flat and roasting on a sheet tray and onions are the worst onions onions are just so much water there's there's no way to make that work right under a chicken um, Carrots are kind of the same. They have a lot of water. I typically do carrots on a separate sheet tray so I can kind of keep my eye on them. That's why I keep potatoes as the only thing I put underneath my chicken or bread. <laughs> no water and bread. Um, you could also probably do, you could sub in a sweet potato. You could probably do like a butternut squash, but the onions and carrots are just going to create a sea of moisture under the chicken and the thing is when you take the pan out of the oven and the chicken is done the onions aren't really cooked all the way 
because they've been bathing in their own water and they're they're kind of poached and weird and that's what I showed you in that video is this is why I don't put onions now I finished cooking those onions in the oven and they were delicious but if you want onions and carrots roast them on their own sheet tray so that you can monitor them and if they need longer or shorter it's not connected to the cooking time of the chicken does that make sense so that's the why behind that okay number five what size cast iron skillet do you recommend such a good question uh, I love roasting a single chicken in a large cast iron skillet there's just something about it that's very um, homey the the potatoes are great it's just a great experience and then I serve it in the cast iron skillet so it's not necessary but it's one variation that I love to do the the minimum size for this would be a 10 inch cast iron skillet I think you might be able to squeeze it into an 8 inch um, but a 12 inch is even better because again you get that expanded surface area the potatoes have a little wiggle room they can roast a little crisper so if you were gonna buy one size of cast iron skillet I would encourage you to get a 10 inch and here's the deal cast iron skillets are, are not expensive you can buy them at Academy uh, you can buy them some grocery stores carry them you can buy them at the Walmart uh, you can buy them at Amazon like they are they are $25 maybe I mean they just you're looking for the lodge brand they come coated already so it's it's such an easy if you don't own a cast iron skillet I would recommend getting one and I would start with a 10 inch it's a great all-purpose size and then if you want to round out your collection get an 8 and a 12 I use them all the time okay next question this is a good one it's very multi-layered I only have one oven the problem occurs when I'm roasting chicken sheet tray veggies and baked apples that all need oven attention I have the problem that I feel everything is better freshly out of the oven it's really difficult at family gatherings and holidays I totally can relate because here is a fun fact about the kitchen at my house. I have one oven and it's a small oven. It's not even like the big full sized ovens. I can very snugly fit two half size sheet trays in my oven and that's it. There's not a third rack, there are two racks and when you put two things in there, my oven is full. So I have learned um, over time how to manage this and I'm here to tell you I, you, you hit the nail on the head. You're basing this decision on a way you feel about something and I'm going to lovingly look at you and say your feeling about how things are coming out of the oven is not in line necessarily with the reality of what is true about food that comes out of the oven. And I know this from personal experience in my own home kitchen coupled with running a commercial kitchen here at Hurley House. We as home cooks tend to have misconceptions about the amount of time something can hold and still have the same quality once it comes out of the oven. So I want you to start adjusting your thinking a little bit. There are very few items that are absolutely at their best and shouldn't be served any other way than fresh out of the oven. The two examples that I can think of are some sort of roasted fresh green vegetable because you want that to roast to the right degree of doneness and then you kind of want to put it on the plate and be done. If you leave it in too long, it'll start to get overcooked and that's gross. And if you take it out and let it sit, they don't hold heat, they get cold. And then when you reheat it, they overcook. So they're great right out of the oven and that's about it. And the second example, honestly, that I could think of was some sort of baked egg dish. And I'm not talking about an egg casserole. I'm talking about something where you're cracking eggs and baking them to a particular degree of doneness and then you need to serve them apart from that everything else can hold now I've never baked apples and so that might be something that really does need to go straight from oven to plate if that's the truth then that might be your one but what I want to, I, what I want you to start thinking about is using the time that these other items come out of the oven and something else goes in for example with the roast chicken I've told you that a minimum you need to walk away once it comes out of the oven for a bare minimum of 20 minutes but really 30 is better and really you have up to an hour where you can still go and carve that chicken and it's hot okay so if you take a chicken out of the oven and you've got 
a minimum of 30, maybe 45 minutes, that's when you put your baked, oven, your baked apples in the oven. If you have sheet tray veggies, I would put them in with the with the um, chicken at the same time, take them both out, and maybe your sheet tray vegetables need 15 more minutes, so you leave them in and you kind of stagger everything. If you're worried about your sheet tray vegetables, and I'm talking about not a green vegetable, I'm picturing like sweet potatoes or a squash or, um, I'm blanking on other vegetables that aren't green. Um, I don't know, potatoes or something. You can quickly rewarm those without a, uh, without them losing their quality. So. You have to kind of create a timeline for yourself and you have to use that inactive time as active oven time for other dishes. I hope that makes sense. One thing I wanna, just a tip I wanna tell you is if you have a casserole that's going in the oven, like let's say you're doing, um, you know, for Thanksgiving, let's say you have sweet potatoes or dressing or some other like baked casserole that's going into the oven and you need to keep it warm once it comes out in between cook time and serve time, here's what you wanna do. You want to cover it tightly with foil and then you want to create and this is if you don't have an extra oven or if you don't have a warming drawer if you have a warming drawer then by all means just shuttle that guy into the warming drawer but what I do is I get uh, beach towels and I put them on my counter and I put the hot dish on top of the beach towel it's covered in foil and then I put two or three other beach towels on top of the dish and you're basically creating this little insulated place where it's gonna hold the heat and it's gonna take a very, very long time for that to not be hot. So that's kind of a way to makeshift um, a warming drawer if you don't have one or if you don't have an extra oven. That's, that's a hack that I've learned because I, I too literally only have one oven and no, uh, no warming drawer. And I have hosted Thanksgiving in that kitchen from that oven before we had the commercial kitchen. So it can be done. Um, and then as, a, as an added layer to this question, I want to remind you that one of our pillars, one of our foundational elements of hospitality is to learn to live within your limits. Um, just like if you can only seat six people for dinner, then you're not going to invite 14 people over for dinner because you don't have a place to seat them. In the same way, if you have one oven, you may need to get smart about the menu choices that you make to serve your guests, particularly if you're choosing to host a large group in your home from a kitchen that has one small oven. you got to get scrappy. You've got to get smart because no one is there to interact with a stressed out you. They want a pleasant, relaxed you, and there is nothing that stresses us out more as hosts than the food and the last minute nature of all that coming together. And if it's not meeting our you know, expectations or if something's going wrong, it can become an emotional crisis and then no one's having a good time. So some of that, not all of it, but some of that can be sidestepped simply by taking a realistic view of what you've got to work with and operating within that. So if you are gonna be the kitchen that is serving food to a large family gathering, let's get smart about it. Let's, um, let's live within our limits for the sake of everyone involved. Okay, two quick last questions. Number one, um, I, I, saw, I kind of took some comments from some people and put them into a a question so this isn't a quote but I saw some feedback from people that the first time they had done this said they burned the skin or it tasted too salty and my response is this is how we learn how do you know how long it takes in your oven until you know that was too long how do you know how much salt you need until you taste it and you say that's too much salt I don't like that because I've said this from the beginning I can give you the framework and the guidelines and the structure and I can show you and I can model, but I do not have your tongue and I do not have your oven. And those two things are completely individualized. Your taste is different than my taste. So you need to learn how much salt you like on your chicken and you need to write it down and then you know that was too much, next time try less. You need to use your oven at 425 or 400 and time it and get it down because your oven is different than my oven. It just, there's no way for me to give you a one size fits all instruction regarding how salty and the oven time. Cannot be done. So this is how we learn. This is why we took six weeks of this roast chicken challenge because you're not gonna get it on the first try. You're not gonna get it on the second try. I'm on the 
hundredth try, I've probably roasted 100 chickens. I still learn something. I have a sheet where I, oh, you know, this worked, try this next time. I'm copiously taking notes on my little recipe sheet and then I, it's, it's my version and I know what I like and then it, I get better at it. But you never stop learning. And the only way to get better at this is to keep doing it. So if you burned the skin, welcome to the, welcome to the crowd. We've all done it. If, if you think it's too salty, then you need to take note and back it off a little bit. This is how we learn. This is how you're gonna get better. This does not mean that you're a bad cook. This does not mean that you failed and shouldn't roast chickens. This means you're in there doing it. You're, you're gonna get better because you made a mistake and now you know and you learn from that mistake. It's only a mistake if you don't learn from it. So this is how we get better in the kitchen. Get back in there, do it again. Get back in there, do it again. It's gonna become second nature and if you burned it or it was too salty, then we take notes and we move on. Last question. I think I mentioned this in the first week, but the question is, how does any of this apply to turkey? Or does any of this apply to turkey? Yes, all of it. All of it applies to turkey. The reason that I timed this roast chicken challenge when I did is because I knew that the sixth week would be this week, the week before Thanksgiving. And if you are roasting a chicken, you're ready. I mean, roasting a turkey. Sorry, if you're roasting a turkey, or maybe you're roasting a chicken for Thanksgiving. If you're roasting a turkey for Thanksgiving, you are ready. Here's why. Everything I've shown you, that little recipe for a roast chicken, just take it and expand it. A turkey is just a really, really big chicken. This example is a tiny bit indelicate, so please forgive me, but it, it was the, it was, it's the best analogy I can think of. If you have been roasting chickens for weeks at a time, you basically, it's like changing the diaper of a newborn. When you go to roast a turkey, it's gonna feel like you're changing the diaper of like a two and a half year old. It's just the same thing, only bigger. Everything is bigger. You're gonna put the gloves on, you're gonna need more paper towels, you're gonna need more salt, you're gonna, you know, loosen the skin, you're gonna let it season it's going to take longer in the oven but you're going to let it rest and because it's bigger this is the genius thing about turkeys because that bird is so big you can let it rest for an hour before you carve it easily probably more but last thanksgiving and the thanksgiving before i took my turkey out of the oven an hour before i carved it still almost burned my hand on the hot meat so there this turkey's not getting cold and it only gets better as it sits so Everything we've talked about in the roast chicken challenge has prepared you to roast a turkey for Thanksgiving. Uh, if you need specific questions answered, I'd love to do that. I don't want to take a ton of time talking turkey specifically here, but I am here to tell you it will feel very familiar if you're doing it. Okay, you can do it. Okay, I want to say that next week, because it is Thanksgiving, we're not having a hotline. Uh, I'm going to be with my family on Thanksgiving, obviously, and um, we will not have one next week. But I do have an assignment for you. I want you to take notes. Wherever you're going for Thanksgiving, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, whatever you're serving, whatever you're eating, whatever you observe, I want you to think of a question based on what you watched happen at your holiday, and I want you to send it to me so we can talk about it. Holidays are tricky. Uh, they're a minefield of emotions. They are a food festival, basically, with the amount of food that needs to be prepared and executed. There's just a lot going on. So my assignment for you is to look around and come up with a question and send it my way, and we'll talk about it uh, the week after Thanksgiving, which will be December. Is that crazy? Anyway, this has been the most fun. Thank you for participating in the hotline. Thank you for participating in the roast chicken challenge. I love doing this with you. I hope you have a lovely week.